Hello, hello, and welcome. It is the time of year to set goals. Are you a goal setter? You may or may not be. If you're not familiar with who I am, I am Jennifer Maxwell and I help uh, coaches and online course creators and amazing entrepreneurs increase their online presence and really connect with any potential client so you can land the sale and close the deal and become the one that everyone loves to buy from and work with. So let's talk about goal setting. It is the time of year where we need to actually start getting that done. Do you love setting goals? Some people love it, like absolutely, like they can't wait. My husband is one of those people. He feels incredibly unsettled if he does not have his goals ready. If January 1st hits and he hasn't written his goals, like everybody just better clear out because he's got to sit down and write that list and, and get really focused for the year to come. For me, on the other hand, the word goal is like, I don't know. You may as well ask me, what is the meaning of life? The word goal does not compute for me at all. So I have to approach goal setting uh, in a different way as it comes uh, uh, when it comes to my business and how I want to prepare for it. So um, I ask some critical questions of myself, like what do I want to be doing or where would I like to see my business go or how do I want to invest my time? I am, I like uh, strategies and um, systems. So systems are really interesting for me. And so I want to figure out how to do things, not what to do. So if you are familiar with the DISC personality profiles, I lean on that a lot. It is not the be all and end all, but it is a great framework to be able to understand natural human behavior. We've been you know, using these sort of four archetypes since the time of Hippocrates. So this is not new. You see it on modern modern day sitcoms, when Kramer walks into the room, you know what to expect. So it's the same thing for human nature. So let me just give you a quick uh, rundown. If you're not familiar, basically the DISC personality profiles, um, you have outgoing on the top, which would be D and I personalities, and more reserved on the bottom, which are C and S's. I know you could be a blend of all, we're all a blend of all four, but you may have one more dominant than the other. Um, then you have uh, task focus, which is really critical to understand, uh, or people focus. And a task focused person is someone that would be uh, really interested in, in making a lot of lists. Uh, you want to get things done. You want to check, check, check. You don't have fun until it's done. Um, and a, a people person is more of a person that likes to have um, a lot of conversation. You get energy and inspired from being around people. You may hop on uh, Facebook or social media a lot because that's where you tend to uh, connect with others. And then you go to bed at night and you're thinking about all the great conversations that you had, or you know maybe somebody lost their dog and that's really heart wrenching for you. So that would probably indicate that you're a people person. And again, you may you know you may have two or three that are quite high and one that's quite low. So based on that, let's talk about the most important things that you need to consider no matter where you land on the DISC personality chart, no matter who you are, these three critical questions will help you determine what you should be doing for yourself as you plan for your business in the year to come. So one of the things that, I, the first thing you wanna do is consider where do I enjoy spending my time? So for me, when I had to think about what it was I was going to be doing in the in this coming year, I thought, you know, I really actually like being with people. And for those of you that don't know, I am a, du a double dose of people. I My I and my S are like only two points off each other. So I'm both outgoing and reserved, but a double dose of people. And I actually also have quite a high C quadrant. So I'm actually, if you can believe it, a double dose of people and a double dose of reserved. Um, so it's an interesting thing to kind of uh, navigate. And so for me, because I'm a double dose of people, I actually love uh, communicating with people and being online. And I really resisted the idea of putting together a Facebook group, for example, or even a membership because I was like, oh, that's going to be so much time. And how much time do I have to be with everybody? And what are the, what's required and expected? And once you get started, then you can't not. And you know all these things, right? So I was really playing it safe for a long time. I thought, I'll just be a course creator. And people can buy the courses. And I'll just advertise for that. But when I do these lives and people hop on with me and we you know, have a conversation or people comment afterwards, I feel this energy that comes from that. 
So that is a clue that that is something I should do more of because it fills my bucket. Not everybody feels the same way. Some people, and particularly task-focused people, do not get a lot of energy from being with people. It's soul-sucking and time-consuming <laughs> and they don't want to do it. So if that is you, you may consider that uh, doing group membership or you know doing these kinds of things isn't for you. However, if you are clever enough to know where your income comes from, and you should, you may still need to be out kind of having a, a client facing approach or out doing outgoing things, which may mean a membership or uh, leading live courses or any of those kinds of things. However, here is the caveat for you. If you are a task person and being with people takes a lot of energy for you, then you need to either not do those things, uh, pass that off, or do them, but know that you are going to need a lot of recovery time. It takes a lot of energy to do this. So this is a critical step for you to know that when you are planning your weekly schedule and you may do like say two lives a week, if that's what you wanna do, that you are gonna need some recovery time after that, some quiet time. You just need you know, half an hour, get a cup of coffee or have a tea, um, close your office door and nobody kind of disturb you because you need to recharge. So that's another time consideration that you're working with as well. So here, the, uh, the first thing is know what brings you energy uh, and, and do that, right? Uh, knows, know what maybe what doesn't bring you energy, but what serves your overall uh, bottom line and plan for that when it comes to your schedule. So timing is another one. So what brings you joy? How much time is it going to take? And of course, the third one, if not number one, is, is it going to bring you money? Is it going to make you money doing this thing? So that's a real consideration. So if you love being with people and going live and interacting like I love doing, is this going to bring me money? Is this an avenue that I should pursue? Or is it just fun? So that's a consideration. If you don't like being with people, but it brings you money, then you need to consider if that's something you wanna do or if it's something you can outsource um, and or do you need to make sure that you craft in some time for you to recover. So those are three top things I want you to consider when you're making setting your goals this year. Whether you use the word goal or uh, things you'd like to do or path or map, whatever it is that you want to, however you wanna frame it, consider those three things. Does it bring me joy or not? Uh, can I outsource it or do I need to do it? And if so, um, recovery time when it comes to that and money. So those three things, that's really the three top things you should always consider. Time, energy, and money. That is what you have control over and you need to make sure that that's a priority as you're planning your schedule and looking at how your goals are gonna work for you in the year to come. So that's the takeaway for today. Happy planning. It's a fun and exciting time of year when you can kind of set things up and uh, and work toward them. Of course, you never know what's gonna happen. This year was not as we planned. As you know, anything can happen. It's a bit, bit of a plot twist and a surprise when it does turn out the way it does sometimes. But at least if you stay focused, uh, you you know, as course creators, entrepreneurs that you are we have the ability to pivot right pivot the word of the year don't we hate that word now but it's true um, more so even than these big corporations that are like the Titanic it takes a lot of energy to turn one or two degrees that is the beauty of the work that you do that you can pivot quickly and as needed when something's not working stop it and do something else so i hope that you'll take that away today consider how you're going to invest your time energy and money in the coming year and here is to a great and prosperous year and season to come and i'll catch up with you soon take care